The following is a hockey podcast out of Vancouver and Surrey, British Columbia. It'll only consist of a lot of pup talk and even more BS, or in actual words, banter and satire. Enjoy and as always, go Canucks go. Trevor, I'm kind of happy the Canucks lost last night. Because if they won last night and we were at the Blarney Stone, I would not be here today. And I'm <laughs> kind of excited to do this episode of Locked on Canucks. Uh, they lose to Dallas. Pedersen, uh, what's up? Talk it. You're confusing me. And uh, I'm still a little drunk. Again, let's do this. Your Locked On Canucks, your daily podcast on the Vancouver Canucks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, 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 happy Friday and welcome to another episode of Locked On Canucks. My name is Trevor Beggs, co-host of Locked On Canucks and also a Canucks writer for Daily High Vancouver, writing the post game live from the Blarney Stone last night. Oh, what a good time. It was the best Canucks loss of all time, okay? We're going to talk about that today. Uh, Before we get into it, okay, you know, make sure you go subscribe, follow the channel for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. And you know we got to shout out a friend, okay? So let's shout out our friends over at FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. And Kyle, we're getting started here, man. But honestly, it feels like the night really never ended, man. Again, the best Canucks loss (laughs) of all time out celebrating last night. But uh, it could have been better, okay? It could have been better. And even though at Blarney Stone, Pedersen's jersey was hanging up on the wall, Mm -hmm. you know, he wasn't the star of the game last night. And uh, hasn't, you know, been the star that he's been in quite some time, too. So I want to get your takes on that. We'll talk about Talkett's lines coming up later as well. Um, But yeah, Pedersen, again, so... He had his chances last night, right? It could have been oh a different story if he buries some of those chances in front of the net. But Kyle, like you kind of said uh, off the top or with the photo on the show, 27 points in his last 30 games. It's it's good, but it's not superstar level uh, play that we're not mm-hmm. we're getting from Pedersen. Yeah, it's, it's just not... Uh, it's not the type of character, you know, that we envisioned in this Cinderella story. If the Vancouver Canucks want to go really far this year... Heck, if they even want to go really far next year, you know, it comes down to Patterson being not average, you know, not even just really good. There's got to be more instances in Patterson's game where he's dominant and uh, Canucks fans are kind of scared that that's not going to happen going into the end of this season and more notably the playoffs. Now we'll say this, okay, Patterson in the playoffs uh, the last time around, he was doing it. Patterson for his uh, Swedish team back in the day when the playoffs were were going and he was a rookie or a young player. He Mm -hmm. did it. I feel like there's a 15% chance that Tockett went up to him or he had a talk with Tockett and was like, you know what, man, we're going to make the playoffs. Let me just rest my legs, you know? Let me just have a second season in April. I know. But you know what I'm saying? Like, he is a superstar. He's one of those guys. He's a baller, and maybe that's just a bit of strategy for him. I don't know. That's my theory, man. I'm hungover and I'm hopeful. <laughs> well, the, the thing about Pedersen this season is, you know, in a guy like JT Miller, I think you know what you're going to get on a night-to-night basis. The problem with Pedersen now is you don't really know what guy's going to show up. I mean, again, for the most part, he's looking good, but again, not dominating games, not taking over games. I mean, this was a guy who in January, what, had 13 goals in 14 games. And since then, you know, a little bit more quiet, right? Um, but I'm not I'm not too worried about it, man. And I know he's never played in the playoffs before, but I do think that we're going to see the best version of Elias mm. Pe- or Elias Pettersson in the playoffs. OK, I don't know if it's uh, in his head or what, but um, I still believe in this guy being a star player. And I'm vi- mm. envisioning it, man. Us back at the Blarney Stone. Game seven, Pettersson with the overtime winner. OK, Ooh. you know, Pettersson's got that kind of potential to uh, do some damage for the Canucks. But uh, Hung yeah, over you know, and hopeful, last- man, hung over and hopeful. That's that's Hung the over feeling, and hopeful. man. Hung over and hopeful, man. I like it, man. Hey, maybe uh, Patterson just needs to, you know, lay off a little. Just relax. You get what I'm saying? It's all good. Uh, be 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 less stress free. There's a lot of things that could be uh, going on, but again, you know, if you just look at the numbers and some of the uh, quote unquote regression that the Canucks are having as an overall team, it's not a rude thing or a powerful thing to say that a lot of that does have to do with Pedersen's play, okay? And again, people are going to be like, yo, it's not all on him, bro. He's one of the best players in hockey. He's one of the best players on your team. A lot of it is on him. 
So when the team is struggling on the power play, a lot of that has to do with him. When this team is dropping a whole goal per game over the last, like, 25, 30 games, a lot of that has to do with, again, Pedersen only having 27 points in his last 30 games. You know what I'm saying? It's, I guess what I'm trying to get to is this, okay? All this noise that's around him, it's warranted. But rest assured, I, again, just believe there's another level to him. And I think I only believe that because, again, last night, drunk, sad. Trevor, you saw me, man. My whole mood switched, bro. As soon as the Canucks lost, it was over. I was, to go home. To go home. I was ready to go home at 1030. I don't want another drink. And then Trevor keeps the party going. Boom, bam. Next thing you know, it's like 1 a.m., drink in hand, having a good time. They're playing Natasha Bet. They're playing that song, whatever that song. No one else can do it for me. That song is playing. I look to the ceiling with Trevor, and I see Elias Patterson's jersey hanging way up there. I put my arm around Trevor, and I say, yo, don't worry. Be happy. For real. So, again, maybe that's why I'm optimistic. He'll get it back. He'll get it back. Yeah, I wonder if Pedersen knows that his jersey's hanging up in the Barney Stone. Uh, I, you know, I, I think he would be a fan of that, you know. Um, I am curious who we're going to see Pedersen play with come playoff time. And, Kyle, I kind of want your thoughts about what Talkit did last day. I know we'll, we'll, get, we'll go through the lines because uh, there was a, a few interesting decisions for sure. But last night, you know, Talkit decided to go with Pedersen, Besser, and Hooglander mm-hmm. on, the, on the top line. I liked, I liked it, man, to be honest. Uh, I thought, again, statistically, they had a good night. They were the Canucks' best line. Um, but it, it does feel like they could have done a bit more. They were definitely a high event line. That's the thing. You know, the Canucks, again, are a pretty tight checking team right now, not allowing a lot of shots. That Pedersen line was out there for a ton of shots for, but a ton of shots against as well. Uh, but Kyle, I'm kind of curious. Like, what, what do you think of Pester, Besser, and Huglander? And would you keep the experiment going? Oh, there you go. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, okay. Boom, bam. Sorry. I had a glitch going on with the system. Um, and hang, hung over. Uh, where am I going with this? Okay. I think they have to stick with Besser, Patterson, and Hoaglander for the sheer fact that they put them together. You know what I'm saying? Like, can Tocket stop pressing the blender? Maybe use 120 minutes of hockey between all these random lines to give it, I don't know, a chance of working out. All in all, of course, in theory, and you can look at it from afar, that, yeah, this could r- really work. Besser, Pedersen, and Hoaglander could really, really, really work. And, you know, you and I haven't really been talking about that only because we never really thought Miller would leave Besser's side, blah, 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 you know? So, yeah, all in all, I, I think it could work. Yeah, and it's funny because coming into the season, Kyle, what was one of my takes? It was I wanted to see a top line of, Pedersen, Besser, and Kuzmenko. That was what I was pumping up in the summer, right? And I thought that line had a chance to be one of the best lines in hockey now. Uh, I think we're both more excited to have Hoaglander up there than than Kuzmenko, for sure, with what's transpired in the last six months. But, you know, again, it's three of the most uh, offensively skilled players on the Canucks all in one line. And I, I would like to see what Pedersen and Besser could do with a bit more time playing together because they've had that chemistry in the past. Exactly. The crazy thing about it is now five years ago where they looked like they were going to be one of the best duos in the NHL. It looked like they were going to be a McKinnon and Rantanen. And then, you know, they stopped playing together for the last three years or more, right? So wow. I'm curious think, to bro. see what they could do. You're making me think, and then you put Miller and Lindholm together? You're making me think. Ooh, again, okay. again, so th- th- okay. does, best, does Besser wake up Pedersen? Because, again, to throw it from, <laughs> to the main character, Mr. 11.6, the guy who can literally do it all. If he finds his game, again, it's safe to say that the Vancouver Canucks are, in theory, tw- twice the team. Because he's an outlier type of player. And he's going to be playing 20-plus minutes a game like he did last night in the, in the playoffs. Like, Dude, when he's at his game, he's one of the best players in, in hockey. And when he's one of the best players in hockey, chances are JT Miller is the same thing or Quinn Hughes is the same thing or Thatcher Demko is the same thing. And then you got this immediate equation to, oh, yeah, this team is really, really, really good. And now if we have that version of the Canucks coinciding with this, oh, damn, this this Canucks team is actually structured and they don't really give up a lot of crazy looks and blah, blah, blah. There's still that recipe to get to June and 
again, hungover and hopeful. Shout out to the Blarney Stone. If it wasn't for the Blarney Stone, I wouldn't be this positive about what happened at 945 last night. But um, the Canucks can still win the Stanley Cup. And I want you and you and you and you and you and you to understand that, okay? I see Steven in, in, the, uh, in the comments. And can you read this out, Trevor, and say something about it before you get to break? Ooh, looks like Steven says, uh, looks like we're heading for a painful first round exit, gents. No, man, that's uh, that's not the uh, the positivity I need, man. I don't, I don't know about that. He's got to listen to Natasha. Oh. Yeah. He's got to listen to Natasha Benningfield or whatever. What's that song called? Unwritten, right? Un Unwritten, Unwritten by Natasha Benningfield. There you go. Someone else can live for you. My wife, I like that song, man. <laughs> I think it's your new favorite song of all time. Yeah, um, Kyle, Kyle may or may not sing on the other side here, but what we will do <laughs> is we will grade the lines that talk it uh, put together last night. Ooh, and we'll go through it because, again, a lot of interesting decisions there. Some big surprises, including uh, obviously the, the Miller's uh, wingers as well. Um, but we got to pause quickly, show to a beloved sponsor. And I got to remember how I got here, man. Like, you know, last <laughs> I knew it was 1 a.m. on the dance floor. And then I woke up and here I am recording this podcast, man. Locked on Canucks, baby. Coming back after this ad read. All right. You know the deal. Passion, drive, and patience. That's what brings home the winning trophy. And it's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts to choose from for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash, baby. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply, eBay guaranteed fit, only available to US customers. Okay, people, we back. Talking about your Vancouver Canucks, Kyle Bowen, Trevor Beggs, post Blarney Stone, but still here, man, being adults, man, being mature. Didn't go to bed till 3.30. Trevor Beggs didn't go to bed till 7 a.m. <laughs> and we showed up here, man, living the dream, doing our thing, and ultimately, A, being there for the people, and B, trying to get through this weekend and go into Sunday being excited uh, for the Canucks game, because again, last night, 945, I was sad. I wasn't giving up, but I was just, I was just frustrated. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want my people being frustrated going into, again, a long weekend. Yeah, with the Canucks, look at the standings. The Canucks, they're playing better defensively, a lot better defensively than we've kind of ever seen them play. And if Pedersen just gets it going with these new line mates, potentially, I'm telling you, this team can be twice as good. And even when they're not twice as good, they're still competing with the best teams in the league. Keep in mind, it's the Dallas Stars. Yeah, we didn't bring it, but with three minutes left, it's a tie game. And rightfully so. You can even argue the Canucks five on five were better than Dallas. You know what I'm saying? We're good Canucks fans. Man, oh man. Like, there we go. The positivity. Flowing, man. Go. Still one of the best teams in the NHL. It's all good. Um, in terms of the lines from last night, you know, we've already talked about Pedersen's line. I, 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 the idea of it, I give an, I'm going to grade that an A. In terms of how they performed last night, I'm going to give them a B minus. Um, but that's a line I definitely want to see more of down the stretch here. Now, Miller's line with Baines and Lafferty on his wings was probably the biggest surprise of the night. Um, obviously, <laughs> it allowed Tockett to keep together the best third line in hockey. Um, but what did you think of the decision to put Lafferty and Baines with uh, JT Miller? F, dude. Come on, Rick Tockett. That's an F. Bro, you played Buffalo, Montreal, Calgary last week. You want to play these games and, I don't know, to do something brand new and way out of the box? I think use those games. I think when Canucks tickets are really expensive and you got a home game against the Dallas Stars, don't, you know what I'm saying? That's a, that's yeah. a major experiment. 
And honestly, to do that to JT Miller, too, who's, I mean, we talk about Pedersen, right? 27 points in 30 games. JT Miller has 34 points. He has, I think, like 14 goals in his last 24 games. Like, he's bringing it right now. And uh, that's uh, that's his reward. And it was just confusing, too, because I, I think as players right now, they probably want some comfortability slash consistency with their line uh, uh, line mates, right? Just even a bit. And what we saw yesterday was what they didn't do in practice a couple days ago. So it was the most curveball thing I've seen in quite some time when it comes to uh, Canucks coaching. Yeah. And uh, again, it's, I'm trying to think of what the Canucks lineup should look like. And again, obviously we're fans of the Pedersen, Besser, Hoaglander line. If we like that line and Besser is no longer on Miller's wing, Kyle, who do you want to see as uh, JT Miller's wingers? Lindholm, dude. Lindholm. Okay, why yeah, not? You really got me in that use... Lindholm idea. No, because why right not? Now, use... if he's on the lineup, let's say. Bro, why not be hopeful and say, yo, Lindholm, like he's practicing tomorrow? We don't know. Let's be hopeful, dude. Can I just say what I want to say? All right. <laughs> we don't know. We don't know the deal. Okay, let's say Lindholm and Miller play together. Miller being this emotional dude, Lindholm being the new guy in town who's kind of struggling, okay? Bro. Could you imagine JT Miller's MVP like season with the Vancouver Canucks? You know, MVP to us, and we only matter. West Coast bias, right? Could you imagine if this season, this magical season, had that piece in one of the chapters, right? Lindholm is back, and it's because of JT Miller. Dude, they'd build Miller a statue ASAP. He's on route, Dad. Yo, dude, JT Miller, man. What a season. Yeah, we may not talk about this enough, but... Um... You know, Kyle, you know, I've talked about, you know, is Quinn Hughes having the best season in Canucks history, right? You know, 90 plus point projection from the blue line. You know, is that on par or better than what Henrik Steen's done in the past or Pavel Burry's done in the past? But the crazy thing about that argument is JT Miller might be the, the best guy in the Canucks this season. So is JT Miller actually having the best season in Canucks history, considering his point totals, what he brings overall to the lineup, uh, the Ooh. fact that he's in a matchup role? Is JT Miller having one of the best seasons in Canucks history? Damn. Or the best. Hey, we got to talk about that. We got to talk about that, man, in a couple days because I, I, you're making me think. There's still nine games left, too, man. I'm, You know what, man? Again, I, I'm reset. I can't wait for the next nine games. One love, one love to the Barney Stone. Uh, uh, keep talking about these lines, okay? Again, I, I gave the second line yesterday, the Miller line, an F, okay? That's the truth. Yeah. The, the, and, the individually, idea. though, individually, though, R.C. Baines draws two penalties. J.T. Miller scores a goal. Like, there's things there. But as a line. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I, I think you and I, we're both Surrey boys. You know, it's a Surrey's Canucks show after all. Locked on Canucks. You're Canucks every day. Uh, we want to see Archie, you know, get the big boy minutes. But just the idea of throwing two guys who, you know, are fourth line AHL level players on Miller's wing. Um, that was a curious decision for sure. Um, I, I give the idea of it a D and the actual performance an F. I, don't, I think when the I thought when the three of them were out there last night, there wasn't a lot going on. Like you said, a couple of plays by Arch Deep. Um, and, but Miller scores with Garland on his wing. Um, the yeah. third line, obviously, I think we won that line back together. That's just an A. But I think the interesting thing is, I look at a guy like Connor Garland, and it seems like Garland is a guy you want on every line. <laughs> like, yeah. put Garland with Pedersen, boom, Pedersen starts playing better. Garland sets up Miller for a sweet goal last night. Garland looks great on the third line with Bluegren Joshua. It's like, can you have a Connor Garland on every line? Um, I don't know if there's anywhere in this lineup that I don't like Connor Garland. Yeah, you know, and you know, you talk about uh JT Miller being you know the MVP, being that guy all season long. I mean, Connor Garland has probably been the second most consistent Canucks forward five on five as far as just being noticeable, man. I, I don't know if like that's always something that equates to data. Because sometimes I think even the data favors Patterson too much when it comes to trying to determine if he's playing up to up to his potential or not. Because the data might tell you that he is, but as far as being noticeable, shift in and shift out and doing something net positive, I feel like we get that more from Connor Garland with the puck. And just again, trying to make things happen. He's he's that guy, man. He might be a big time X factor going into April. He seems to care, man. And another, you know, you brought up the whole, uh, who would you like to see with JT Miller type of thing? You know, like, again, Rick Tockett is using this blender. He's having fun. He's hockey nerding now. He's playing a video game right now. It wouldn't surprise me, too, if we saw JT Miller and Connor Garland get at least two and a half periods of hockey together over the next two games. <laughs> 
Yeah, and no, honestly, I could see it happening where, you know, Garland is playing third line minutes with Bluger and Joshua, but maybe does some spot duty on Miller's line. Um, because again, I, I like the idea of Lindholm being there. Uh, but with him out right now, it's it is a question of like who are you gonna put with these guys? And maybe that is Garland subbing in for a few minutes now. Um the uh, the, the one line we haven't talked about last from last night was Ily Mikheyev, Pew Suter, mm-hmm. and Vasily Pod Colson. Um, they had, there was the one chance on the two on one from McCabe and Suter, but aside from that, they had a pretty brutal night. They were on, on the ice for three shot ag- attempts for, and 15 shot attempts against. What do you um, expect? Like, come on, man. No, honestly, it's just another random line. Like was, were those, it was, did we see a lot of, uh, McCabe and pot Coles? And I guess they've been playing a little, no, they have, they've been playing together again, hungover and hopeful right now. Like what's been going on? It just seemed like all the lines were random and that one was destined to just, Again, against the Dallas Stars to not be able to figure it out. Yeah. I, I you know, but Paul Colson really has bounced around the lineup. I mean, uh, mm-hmm. since he's come in and he's often changed, he changes lines in games too, right? Like when at the Calgary game, Paul Colson was on the fourth line, I believe it was with Mikheyev, but then got bumped up to the Miller line for the latter half of the game. So I know Paul Colson, again, individually, he's had some good moments. Um, yeah. But overall, it's yeah, it's a bit of a messy line. But that being said, we keep talking about Pew Suter. You know, this guy, elite bottom six center. Uh, you want him to elevate his line mates a bit, and and that certainly didn't happen last elite night. Elite fourth line center, and also elite or like the most important person on power play one for whatever reason. <laughs> it's unreal. It's, dude. Nice. it's unreal how once again, I feel like even when Taka was answering questions from the media yesterday, I feel as if he wasn't making a lot of sense when talking about why he doesn't think the power play was working. No, for real. Like the whole mechanics thing, it's it's like, aren't you the maestro? I think you're the one that's moving the gears around way too much. I mean, we've seen him multiple times now, instead of like maybe being patient and just like letting guys like Pedersen, Miller and Hughes kind of figure it out. His solution is let's give either Miller or Hughes or Pedersen the puck less. And they're going to figure this thing out. It's like, what? What are you talking about? They've done that with Connor Garland and P.U. Suter. It's weird, dude. It's it's mad confusing. And, bro, to be honest, like, speaking of the press conference, how come – How like, this is why we need Begsy, okay? We need the, everyone in the comments below right now, okay? We need Begsy at those post-game shows, okay? At those post-game press conferences. Because not one person, unless my ears are messed up, not one person asked Talkit about why he put Lafferty, Miller, and Arch team together. And that was the most obvious question. We're facing yeah. the Dallas Stars. The tickets are expensive. People want to see their team, quote unquote, clinch a playoff spot. Just like rebound against LA. It's a bit, it's a big moment. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, why did you do that? Because I feel as if, again, in a one goal game, theoretically, like a decision like that kind of loses you the game or doesn't increase your chances of winning. Yeah. Strange decisions all around from Rick Tockett. Um, Kyle. Let's wrap up the show on the other side, okay? It's going to be that time. We're making it through. No ad read for me, so we're going to pause here. And uh, Kyle will try to fill in uh, some of, some gaps that I have about last night. Uh, wrapping up the show here, Locked On Canucks, your team every day. Man, we're going to have a lot of fun tonight in Vancouver, all my real fans. <laughs> People, people, Kyle Bound, Trevor Beggs, Locked On Canucks. Shout out to YouTube. Shout out to the podcast side of things. Shout out to everyone just tuning in, man. Again, allowing us to live the dream. Allowing Trevor to live the dream, too. This guy's, you know, getting work done. You know, maybe maybe Trevor only had one and a half beers before he wrote this article. Anyways, he's writing an article at Blarney Stone, okay? In the dark. Doing the most. Again, we're living the dream, and it's really because of you and you, and you, and you, and we'll get to your comments in a little bit, because I see a lot of emotion in there, man. I really do. Uh, speaking of emotion, uh, Begsy, man, how you feeling, man, okay? Uh, 24 minutes into work today, you know, you're hungover. Back in the day, you would have called in sick. Uh, like, again, w- what's your perspective on everything in life right now based on Blarney Stone, the Canucks, and, again, your feelings? Lots of positivity, man. I mean, I'm definitely, uh, you know, definitely still a little, a little hungover, that's for sure. But the sun is shining, man. Again, we're here on Lockdown Canucks. We, we are living the dream, man. We are living the dream. Why am I doing this hungover? Because we're living the dream, Kyle. You know, Lockdown Canucks talking yeah. about the Canucks every day. And again, we're talking about a winning hockey team for the most part, right? Uh, yeah. They would have had a chance to you know, reclaim top spot in the West last night. It didn't happen. But 
they're still up there in the standings, man. And again, I think it's, uh, I, I don't go a day without forgetting this, but, uh, you know, playoff hockey is right around the corner, man. And I, the days, I feel it, man. The days are getting longer. Um, the home playoff games is going to be a sick time, man. I'm, I'm, I'm too excited. Um, one guy that I'm, I was excited about be, uh, having it back in the lineup was Dakota Joshua. And I think that's the guy we talk about X factors and this and that, but Dakota yeah. Joshua is the guy that you want playing on your hockey team in the playoffs. And, uh, what do you think about his return last night? I thought, you know, six hits, you know, the first guy over the boards on the penalty kill, like talking to knees up on him. And I thought Joshua responded. Yeah, he, uh, he played good. He was noticeable. He was used a lot. And <clears throat> again, talk it loves this dude really does. But how could you not? Again, proving to be a pretty good penalty killer. Again, the Canucks penalty kill in general yesterday wasn't really effective. But yeah, overall, good penalty killer. Playing way better five on five. Also, a physical force, right? Six hits, first game back. No fear, right? No fear. Contract year. Let's get it. Maybe uh, he, he can injure a finger, you know, getting into battles again or injure his hand, but he doesn't care. He's not scared. Speaking of which, I heard that this guy said he has no regrets. No regrets missing 18 games because he defended Connor Garland in a scrap against the Chicago Blackhawks with like one minute left in the game, in the game that was over. That's the type of guy that, again, people on a really good hockey team appreciate. Rick Tockett, if, he, if he's around for a long time, I'm pretty sure Dakota Joshua is also going to be around for a long time too. And we got to talk about that contract too, man, for real. Hey, speaking of talking about contracts, man, look at Jay Canuck, man, didn't Kyle and Trevor both think Philip Hronick was a god. Dude, he's my he's my number two defenseman, okay? I'm going to have his back no matter what. Straight up. Well, we, did, we, we did talk about Philip Hronick earlier this week, the, the two sides of him. I don't re uh, recall ever calling him god, but I guess we did say he's the second best defenseman in the Canucks history. So <laughs> <laughs> the hype train was, uh, was big early on for Philip Hronick, and hey, he's still a, a pretty damn good defenseman. Uh, man, oh man, I do hope we're watching more games with Blarney Stone. Shout out to Blarney Stone. Shout out to Metropole. Shout out to Mr. Whale commenting uh, that I take off a button every hour. Straight up, man. Straight up. It was the same at <laughs> my wedding, you know. Every hour, got into a button, you know. Damn, I, I didn't even notice that, man. Uh, chest hair on the open. I didn't even notice that, man. Yo, chest hair is a really interesting thing, man. It really is. But yeah, shout out to the Blarney Stone, man. A lot of uh, a lot of good memories there, but I will say this, and it's this is Canucks conversation right here, right? Straight up, man. Locked on Canucks. Dude, nobody was watching the Canucks game at both these bars other than Kyle Bowen and Trevor Beggs. I swear to you. And the Blarney Stone was full, but more people had their eyes on a cover band. So Vancouver's, it's not its not a Canuck City thing yet. You know, its, it's it hasn't taken over. You're going to probably have to wait till 420, a.k.a. when the playoffs start. Uh, that was a, a, a somewhat surprising thing from last night. I don't know if you really remember that because you really remember yeah. nothing from last night. But again, pretty, <laughs> aston uh, pretty astonished how... Again, we went to Blarney Stone as packed and nobody was watching the Canucks game. Yeah, I remember that part of the night. Uh, you know, after I was done watching and, and writing my post game article in the dark. Uh, yeah, that, then I guess it starts to get a little foggy. Um, but yeah, it was interesting. There were there was quite a few people wearing like black skate gear. Um, but yeah, I did feel like we were the only two guys actually watching the hockey game uh, at Blarney. Yeah. You know how you could that. tell? Because but, when uh, Miller scored, when Miller scored, it wasn't loud. Nothing happened. You and I were the loudest. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. Hey, what no, no. You're not sexy right now. Though. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm glad that the uh, the people like weren't tuned into that because it was another boring performance. Like, that was a boring. It, it was exciting if you're a hockey nerd, but just in general, I feel as if the Canucks are leaving a lot on the a lot off the table, and because of that, they're not the sexiest team to watch right now. And it's frustrating for a lot of fans because, bro, we like that stuff, man. We like it when it's really sexy, right? And we're humans. And we know that if everything hits with this team, they could blow the roof off of Rogers Arena every night. They could, man. And hopefully that is the case uh, as we get to the playoffs. Um, let's see. One, one more comment here, and then let's get out of here. Okay. You know, no, we got to talk here. about this. Uh, you know, oh, comments. Okay, comments okay. Okay, look at this. Pen uh, infamous penalties were the story of the game last night. Blah, blah, blah. Was happy with the effort, though. Yeah, the boys played hard. You know, again, three minutes left in the game. It's a tie game against the Dallas Stars. Blah, blah, blah. But here we did it, man. 30 minutes into the show, uh, at the end of the show, uh, we waited to do this. And that's talk about, again, the Canucks are having trouble getting Ws in games where they're playing two teams. And I feel as if I can now count on both hands how many times the refs have kind of stopped 
the Canucks from being fluid or getting what they deserve. Again, it's not the reason why we lost, but it's a regular occurrence now that we're actually playing two teams every now and then. Yeah, and and I mean, I I don't like to use it as an excuse to be honest with you. Um, you know, I still think last night it was a, it was an incredibly tight game, and it is unfortunate that you know a couple of power play goals were the difference. And you know, at the time with the high stick on uh, for Jason Robertson that would fled to the first Dallas goal, at the time I definitely thought it was a high stick going back to the replay. But when you go back to it, it, it is a pretty close call. And, you know, the puck has to be uh, bro. Okay, Trevor, I'm cutting you off. Close call, bro. Yeah, okay, sure, it was a close call, but how about that that blown icing from a couple weeks ago in which, mm, you yeah. know, the Washington Capitals score immediately after, and what do the refs do? After the period ends, they apologize to Rick mm. Talking. You really want to apologize to us? Bro, call that 50-50 high stick a high stick, and let's move on. It's the truth, man. I, I look out for the West Coast. I look out for my neighbors. I look out for the Canucks, and that's some BS. Yeah, well, who knows, man? Maybe the good luck's going to come playoff time, okay? Because the sun's shining, man. I'm feeling good about your Vancouver Canucks. Uh, look, man, we what, we got nine games left in the season now until playoff hockey starts. Uh, the homestand, uh, the nine-game homestand ends on Sunday afternoon, 1230 against the Anaheim Ducks. I'm going to try not to be hungover for that one. Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I think we should get out of here, man, because... <laughs> Yeah, I'm fading, done. buddy. I'm fading. I'm fading too. It's okay. That was a struggle to get through, but um, that was fun, man. And again, one love to the people, man. One love to our neighbors. One love to Vancouver. One love to Blarney. Uh, go Canucks, go. And one love to the Dontos Art Lab, straight up, for providing the space to do this. They really instill that West Coast bias into the people in this building. And we're going to spread that across the neighborhood. Because again, you know, for the fourth time, take care of your neighbors so you can take care of the world. My name is Kyle Bowen. That right there is Trevor Beggs. Sign us out. All right. Shout out to the everydayers, occasional listeners, first time listeners, new subscribers, and those of you who join us here on the live YouTube show. We love each and every one of you, your family, and your dogs too. Locked on Canucks is nothing without you. Okay. Uh, happy long weekend to everybody. Again, nine games to go in the Canucks season. Uh, whether there's wins, whether there's losses, uh, we're going to have you covered here on Locked on Canucks, your team every day but we got to get out of here okay i'm trevor Beggs. that guy's cal bound and you've been listening to locked on Canucks. if patterson comes back man we win in the stanley cup okay for real you're locked on canucks your daily podcast on the vancouver canucks